Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. I started shooting this video before my day begins on a busy weekday. We had some grocery shopping, so was arranging my fridge and pantry. Unfortunately, I have to buy cotton from the store these days when I can get it for free in my hometown. But fortunate enough to live in a country where Indian food stuff is plenty. They come in small packs and I then transfer to a bigger one. It will be tightly packed. So if I keep it as such, it becomes hard to take out when I'm cooking. But when I transfer, I spread and loosen it. This is a storage box I got from IKEA. Bought a couple of them. Fruits are very much needed in this house to send in kids stiffen and even I have it as my mid-morning snack. In here goes all the rice packets. I don't have a glass container to store them so I store it as such in the sack it comes in. This is flower basket where I keep most of the flowers, rice flour, wheat flour, all purpose flour and such. And this box is for oils. And again, my organic coconut oil is over. We'll have to wait for my next vacation to our homeland. Having food that's cooked in an iron vessel is healthy and tasty always. But the hard part is maintaining the vessel. You need to maintain well or season well every time and it pays off. The surface becomes smoothed, almost like non-stick. My mother cleans the stove sometimes this way. She pours some Jif cream or sometimes use the dishwashing liquid onto the microfiber cloth and clean the stove this way. I find this really helpful and easy. Soaking 2 cups of sabudana or the sago seeds to cook for the breakfast next day. Wash sabudana well around 2 or 3 times. Then soak in the same amount of water as of the sabudana. It will absorb the water the next day. So make sure you're using filtered water for soaking. Here you see it has absorbed all the water and has gone soft. These are medium sized sabudana and you need this type to make kichdi or upma. Steaming two small potatoes that's cut in small cubes. Steam the potatoes till they are cooked. As I'm using an iron kadai, keeping this on low heat so that it picks up the heat gradually. Heat three tablespoons of ghee. Ghee tastes much better than any oil for this kichdi, I guess. Add a teaspoon of cumin seeds. Now add 2 teaspoon chopped ginger and few green chilies chopped. Add a few curry leaves. Let the raw smell go and then you can add one onion that's chopped to very small pieces.
You can make this in different ways. Just showing my version. Chopping one small carrot. Add the chopped carrot into the onion. Add the cooked potato. And the sabudana. And gently mix it immediately so that it doesn't stick to each other. You need to cook till each ball is translucent. Add some salt and some sugar. I covered it for some time and kept on low heat. This is done. Rihan was leaving first, so his tiffin gets packed first. I had forgotten to sprinkle coriander leaves, and I had mixed some lemon juice as well into the kitchen. I love to sit next to a window for some time. As breakfast is ready and Arman woke up, I had a bit of time to relax and have my warm water and a banana. Arman's break time is at 10:30 a.m. So he will have to be on an empty stomach if he goes without eating. I either give him the same breakfast, but he doesn't prefer having the same again from school. So most of the days he love to have cereals and serve it with cold milk. I suddenly got reminded of a request from many of you regarding the blade I use for peeling carrots. This is the one. I got this from Lulu recently. It's like three in one. The normal one, the normal type but with sharp blade and the next is the one I use to peel carrots and cucumber. I shall show it in the later part of this video. So keep watching. And that's our breakfast, serving with a slice of onion, lime and green chilli.
I should have not taken two cups of sabudana. One and a half cup was more than enough. In case kids wanted for evening, they can have. Nothing is predictable about food. It all depends on the mood. After breakfast and all leave home, time for some entertainment for myself. Had I not shooting a video, I normally start for lunch preparation after having brunch. That's at 11 a.m. But I came in earlier as filming and cooking takes more time. I don't do anything after breakfast. All I do is take a break for some time. Then first I clean up the sink and any mess on the stove so that I can start my cooking with a clean surrounding. I don't use this karai very often, so there's still some black residue after wiping. If I was using the, I keep cooking in it and season it well, this black color will vanish. Today's menu for lunch is rice with buttermilk curry, fish fry and bitter gourd side dish. For me, I will make a fish curry and be this up. It was time for my brunch, so having an orange. For the fish marinade, I crushed in some ingredients in a blender, shallots, garlic, ginger, curry leaves, fennel seeds, vinegar, salt, black pepper, 2 teaspoon Kashmiri red chilli powder, half teaspoon turmeric powder. For the bitter gar, heat some coconut oil, fry some curry leaves, then add slid green chilies and 4 or 5 shallots that slice. Saute till it's soft and almost fried. Now add bitter gourd that's chopped into your preferred size. Here I used a large and a small one. Add some salt and mix. Let this cook on low medium flame. Add the marinade to a bowl. I forgot to mix in some coconut oil. Spread the marinade well onto the fish pieces. I don't remember the name of this fish but you can always use any fish of your choice. Keep that aside for some time. This is white pumpkin or ash guard. Normally we use the yellow cucumber for this curry but I had only this. I sometimes use raw papaya as well. Into the curry pot. Add the ash guard pieces, slit in 3 or 4 green chilies, add water and salt. Add half teaspoon turmeric powder, keep on medium flame and cook the vegetable. 
to the bitter gourd adding in half a teaspoon of turmeric powder mix well Now for the fish curry that I'll be having. I heated some coconut oil in a pot, added a pinch of fenugreek seeds. Fry the curry leaves. Then goes in four of our shallots that sliced. After a few minutes, add chopped ginger, garlic, and cook till the raw smell goes. For the buttermilk curry, blend one cup grated coconut with two shallots, two cloves of garlic, one green chilli, and a teaspoon of cumin seeds. Blend well. Now add this to the pot after the vegetable is cooked. Add a bit more of water if the gravy is thick. Let this boil for two minutes. Once the ginger garlic is done, add 2 tsp Kashmiri red chilli powder and 1/2 tsp turmeric powder. Keep the flame low and let the spice powders roast in the oil. Make sure you have hot water ready in the kettle. Add little at a time and mix well. Then goes in around 1/2 to 1 cup water. I like the gravy thick and well coated on the fish, so I don't add more water. Add salt and garcinia or tamarind for sourness. Let this boil for few seconds. Meanwhile onto the curry this is done turn off the flame and let it cool down a bit but still warm In goes the fish pieces I added 5 pieces it's better not to use your spatula for mixing swirl the pot and let the fish cook on low flame After a minute I added few ginger juliennes and curry leaves Let me show you the salad I prepare and keep in the fridge. I have peeled carrot and cucumber. If you have organic ones, you are lucky. Now use the peeler and peel. You can see how this comes into thin strips. This is really good for carrots in the salad because carrots are a bit hard to chew if chopped or sliced. This way it looks tempting and easy to eat. The same goes for cucumber. The hard part on using this peeler is that it's difficult as you peel towards the center. Carrot is fine, but as cucumber is soft inside, I stop after a while and then chop. Then I slice a small piece of capsicum and add it some chopped coriander leaves. Mix and I store this in the fridge for two or three days maximum, and then make another batch. Blend one and a half cup curd and pour into the curry gradually, and keep mixing so that the curd doesn't curdle. The curry is still warm. If it was boiling hot, the curd will definitely curdle easily. For tempering, heat coconut oil, splutter mustard seeds, add a pinch of fenugreek seeds, fry curry leaves and dried red chilies. Then goes in quarter teaspoon turmeric powder. Now add this to the curry and cover immediately to lock the flavor. By this time, my husband had come from office for lunch, so frying the fish pieces. 
I was not sure if they will love the taste of the fish, so fried just one last slice for each of them. I finally bought a stainless steel storage tin for storing puppets. And finally, for my wheat dosa. And there we are having our lunch together. Later kids came from school, they freshened up and I served them lunch. On some days, they both or either one, especially Rihan, takes a nap. On this day, only Rihan was asleep. I had my mid-evening snack and my favorite is Avil or the flattened rice with some jaggery and coconut. When mom is chewing something, kids are curious. Arman loves Avil, so I made him a quick Avil milk. Mashed a banana into a cup, added washed Avil or the poha and some milk. As banana is sweet, I add sugar only if they insist. And that's my snack. I guess whoever has joined the challenge, one week is over. You might have checked your weight. I hope you're going on the right track and waiting to be healthily transformed. Let me tell you, weight checking is just to analyze your progress and keep you motivated. Even if you are doing right and haven't lost weight, do not feel negative or feel low. Your body is still changing and each one's body is different. Keep hope and see your healthy, beautiful change after a month. It's a challenge to yourself. How you were when you began and how you feel now or at the end of the month. For dinner, I wasn't craving for rice. Had dosa batter in the fridge. Quickly made one dosa and had it with the fish curry along with some salad. This dosa is a mix of rice, urad dal, green moong dal, ragi and poha or avil. I added a teaspoon of the dressing I made yesterday. The recipe is in the description box. This fish was really tasty, so they needed two peas for dinner. Anyway, that's all for today's video and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Take care everyone. See you with another video. Until then, bye-bye.